everyone. This is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and oops, I've done it again. Okay, yes, yeah, so you know how I do. Last time I did a review on Anna Banana on their new artist, Anna Petanova, um, her pieces. Well, after I did that review and I saw how fabulous the paints were, y'all know what I did. I took my little happy butt down the rabbit hole and picked out three more. Okay, so here they are. I couldn't help myself. I know I bring you guys this kind of video a lot, but I believe that every time I get a new painting, I need to test it for the quality. I need to test for consistencies. So I just want you guys to all understand why I do so many of these like product review videos. I place an order and I do it just as you will do it as a consumer. I shop, I pick it out, I check out. They don't even know I have placed an order. So there's nothing special that they're sending me. I know that's been kind of an issue. A lot of people believe that if you're a YouTube influencer that you're getting something different than maybe what they might get. So I just wanna make sure that I kind of ease your mind about that. I do receive kits for free sometimes, but I have either ordered from them first and was so impressed that I will go back and contact the company and say, hey, I've done a video on you. And a lot of times they'll be like, hey, let's give you another, you know, another um, painting as a thank you, something like that. Or I'll have a company reach out to me and say, hey, we'd like to send you one of our paintings for a review. You can test it and whatever. But what I also do is I will place an order totally separate from that company so that I can test the shipping times legitimate shipping times to make sure they're not sending me something like uber fast. You know what I'm saying? And it also allows me to test the kit and to see if it is the same thing that you guys get when you order. So I just want to make sure that was clear. Now, every company's um, paintings may not all be from the same source like we've talked about. So, you know, I might get a painting that I've chosen that is fabulous and you may get one that is not what you would consider to be up to par. So it, it just depends on where their sourcing is coming from, but I promise you guys, I'm not getting anything special, anything different than what you get when you place an order, okay? So I just wanted to let you know that so that you realize that I am not being bought and I'm not being biased, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and start these three. It's just like Christmas every day at Melanie B's Creative Studio. All right, so this is a tricky palette. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> you guys, I am such a sucker. <laughs> Look at these yellows and these greens and these reds. I'm, this, I'm a little concerned, honestly. I don't care. I love Anna Banana's paints. They're fabulous, but I am a little concerned about this palette I've chosen. <laughs> because I just tend to go down that road. I don't know why. All right, let me open this up and let's look at this. Look what we have. All right, for those of you who have not seen the video of what we do in my household with this foam core packing material, you guys, you have to go watch the video I took of my grandson and my husband. <laughs> It was so much fun to edit. <laughs> My daughter helped me throw in a few extra little, you know, uh, bonus features and stuff, but it is so flipping cute. But I'm telling you, we hit each other with these so hard <laughs> and you never feel a thing. They're fabulous. All right, so here's what we've got. I remember this beautiful painting and I know why I chose it. Here's this painting. All right, so the reason I selected this painting, I have been a photographer since I was 12. I always had a camera in my hand as a kid. I was the only one at any party that was taking pictures of everybody. And that was back when we had the old 35 millimeter and some of the instant cameras, you know, blah, 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 what if. So I have always been a photographer. But when I went to college, and got my two degrees in graphic design and web design. You have to take photography to do either graphic or web design. But 
it also just kind of amped up what I do. So I have been a photographer. I'm obsessed with cameras. I have tons of cameras. I have boxes that I have made to look like cameras. I mean, it's insane. So this is special to me. Now I was a portrait studio manager for, let's see, three years. And so I took pictures every day of my life. It was just a natural job for me and I loved it. I still have people to this day, seven years later, that will say, oh, I know who you are. You took pictures of my so-and-so and they'll show me pictures. And it's just amazing to know that you have like frozen time for people and their children or their families or whatever. So photography is huge for me. Cameras are just an obsession, like everything else in my life. So enough about that. Let's look at our reference guide. Thank God for the reference guide. Thank you, Anna Banana, for knowing exactly what we need. The canvas is exactly the same as the ones I've gotten from them in the past. Now, a lot of you get concerned about rippling. If you do not have the resources to go get it dry mounted, then you can simply tape it down on a board. The sketch boards that I recommend that I use for myself um, are perfect. Tape it down if you would like, gesso it, and while it's kind of wet, still, you know, pull it and stretch it and tape it down, and then you won't have any of this. This is very minimal wrinkling. If it was folded, I'd be much more concerned, but these little wrinkles like this tend to stretch out very easily because their canvases are not thick. They're high quality, but they are not super thick. They're much easier to stretch on a stretcher bar. So, you know, and it helps pull any of this little wrinkling out of here, all right? So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. The colored sections, a lot of people ask about that, so I know I've repeated it a million times, but I do wanna say that I have gotten so used to having the shaded sections that now I am spoiled, because if I am painting this light, like off-white color here, this number, and let's just say it's number 17, then I know this is number 17, that's 17, that's 17, because the shading is exactly the same. I can look and find number 17 without having to get a magnifying glass and a, you know, have a scavenger hunt. So I do love these tinted canvases. I don't necessarily not like it when they come in and they're not tinted. I just have definitely learned that there is a benefit for this tinted background. And now comes the fun part, at least for me it is anyway. The paints that come with a kit can make or break that kit. So this is the foundation of the whole thing. I know the canvas means a lot, but you can manipulate a canvas much easier than you can manipulate paints. So, you know, my preference is to get great paints that don't have to really be manipulated at all or switched out or I don't have to put white down first, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm always really focused on paint quality. Now I want to mention something right quick to some of you who have my digital swatch guide that I sell at my website. I want to show you I have made some you know design changes. Um, I just have a little colorful heading and it's got the same exact contents here as it had before. It is copyright protected. It is not allowed to be reproduced or distributed but that means you can't look at it and go, oh, I'm going to redesign something just like that and sell it to people. But here's the thing, for those of you who've already bought the swatch guide that had the old font or any of that, if you guys want to replace it, it might take me a while to get around to everybody, but you can contact me through my contacts form on my website and, and I'll put the link in, you know, below for you, but I will replace you, your PDF if you would like to have this colorful version instead. Now, for those of you who are gentlemen and may not want colorful rainbows, you can print this in grayscale and it will look very masculine, but it will serve its purpose, okay? <laughs> All right, so I just wanted to point that out because that is something new. The people who are now buying my swatch guide will, will be receiving this version and have been for a few weeks. Um, but for those of you who have already purchased, I don't want you thinking you have to purchase another one to get this design.
you guys see the creaminess of this paint? This is why I continue to go back and shop at Anna Banana. I know that not every painting is gonna be the same at some places, but so far the consistency I have found and especially more recently, Anna Banana has made some big, you know, changes since the beginning and I'm just super impressed with their paints. Okay, so can we just take a minute and talk about the reds in this painting? These are fabulous reds. They are opaque, hallelujah. Lemon yellow by nature is never going to be opaque. So you will always have to go over this kind of yellow repeatedly, unless you add some white to it or white under it. So um, either use a Sharpie on the number and the line uh, and then put your paint over it or add a little white to this color or just replace it completely with another set of acrylic paints. So the only other ones that are kind of semi-opaque would be these two right here, 18 and 16. The rest of these I feel very happy about and especially those reds. I mean, oh, I love a good quality red. All right, so let's move on from this camera painting to our next. So this painting is going to be this one. Here's our reference guide. I'm not going to talk about the canvas because it's exactly like the last one and all the ones that I've done prior. Okay, so let's talk about how fabulous this palette is. You guys know how much the cool colors appeal to me. Look at this palette. Oh, I know I say that every time, but I am just never, I'm just, I don't know, I'm never unhappy with the palettes. And they look like this. Delicious, yummy, incredible. I don't know what else to say. They're fabulous. So let's do some swatching and make sure that they are also opaque. watching all of these paints. And here is something funny that I want to bring up to you. I was going through these paints and I was swatching them and I was like, which painting is this supposed to be? Because I thought I was getting a purple door this time. <laughs> and I'm looking at these blues going, oh no, this is one of those situations where the, the paints aren't going to match the photo, you know, the colors, but the colors and the palette is incredible. And I was like, oh, it doesn't matter. Cause I mean, I'm loving this palette. But the funny thing is, this palette goes with my other canvas that I haven't opened yet. So even the best companies can have a little bit of a flub and have a one-off situation. What they did is they accidentally packaged this paint set with this canvas. And so I'm going to assume that the other package that I have will have the paint set that goes with this purple door canvas. I caught it. That's one of the reasons I swatched too, is because I can kind of decide, is this palette gonna look like the original kind of thing? And when I noticed that I was doing so many blues and, I, and no purples, I went back to my photo album on my phone where I keep all of my paintings stored. All the purchases I make, I have them in an album. So I knew that I had gotten the camera and then I had gotten this beautiful boat out on the lake. And this, these colors matched what I was swatching. And I was like, wait a minute. And so then I also got this door. So I, when I went back and looked, I realized, oh my goodness, 
this this set of paints goes with the other canvas so not a big deal i'll show you that canvas in a minute but i'm going to go ahead and just kind of show you how i fix my paints after i put the number on there i leave them out of the foam trays and I flip them over because the sticker is going to give me my color number and I don't want to tear that off because it gives me the 868 color number for number three. Let me find number three. And if I have another painting from Anna Banana that also uses the color number 868, they're interchangeable and I can use this in another painting if I need to. So I like keeping the color numbers on this foam tray. Okay, so anyway, now all I have to do is it's perforated right here and I will just take it apart. Sometimes easier said than done, but they just kind of come apart and, and then I'll put them in order from that point because I've numbered them on the top, okay? So that's what I did in the first part of this video and I didn't really show you that. I know I've shown it to you in other videos, but anyway, so that's how I store these is I put them back in order and the way I read them because different countries, you know, they read in different order. So they might not read left to right. They might read right to left. And so it wouldn't work for them this way. But this is how you can customize the foam trays to work for you. And this is why I sell these little handy dandy things. Now, Anna Banana sends them with most of their kits, if not all of their kits. And so, you know, you will get some, if you purchase from them, you'll get a foam tray. But if you need extra, for other kits that have individual paint pots like this, they're very handy and they can help you keep everything in one place so you don't get your paint pots confused between kits. This is the canvas that actually goes with this set. <laughs> so now let's talk about these gorgeous colors and how they painted and how they turned out. Can I just say stunningly gorgeousness? The only ones that are not opaque are the orange one, which is semi-opaque, and these two yellows, which are semi-opaque. There are no transparent colors in this whole piece. Now the number one is a little bit streaky and it is that darker kind of bluish purple that tend to do that. And so um, I'm gonna kind of plan ahead in case I don't get our smooth coverage. I will add a little bit of white to it if I need to. And, and then if, even if I need to add a little black back to it to get it to the same shade that it is, I will do that. But I'm sorry, out of 24 colors, if I only have three or four that are potential issues, I am super excited about that. You guys have to remember, I started paint by numbers a year and a half ago before the paints became even remotely workable. And I have seen vast improvements over the last year and a half. But you have to consider, I guess, that I am comparing my first experiences with paint by number a year and a half ago to what I'm experiencing now, which is just phenomenal compared to what it was like a year and a half ago. So all I can imagine is, is that even these are gonna improve over time. So for those of you who are new and you're like, well, gosh, I mean, there's four of them that don't really cover very well. Considering I used to have kits that had 23 out of 24 that wouldn't cover well, this is like, I mean, hallelujah for me, you know? I guess it's just what you're comparing it to. But the reason I swatch is for this reason too. It gives me some prep time. I can think about what do I need to do with this palette when I go to paint it to perfect my end result. So people think it's time consuming. And it, it, you know, it takes me about 10 minutes to swatch 24 paints like this if I'm taking my time. And that's cleaning between each paint and all that stuff. It might not even take that long, but it saves me like days when I'm painting. It also acts as a reference, even if you have a reference guide, if I have my swatch, I can look at a paint section that is dried already, and let's say it's number whatever this opening is right here. If I look at this on my swatch, it'll match, and I'm like, oh yeah, I don't even have to pull out my reference guide. I can look at number 14 on here and say, oh, that's this color, because once they're dry, they're the same. If you look at a paint pot, it's a wet color, so it's not gonna look the same as it does when it's dry. That's number 14, and so is that. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, if you've got it, that, that looks more like a 16. But when it's wet, 
it's way lighter. I hope that makes sense. But it's definitely worth it to swatch. I'm just gonna tell you, if you ask anybody who was skeptical at first and then they started swatching, they will tell you it is a huge time saver. All right, so let's go back to our door painting and we're gonna swatch those beautiful palette. I'm gonna show you that. You're gonna, you guys, your jaws are gonna drop. It is so fabulous. I can't even put words on it. Fabulous, that was the word. Okay, so back to the door canvas. <laughs> Here is the palette. Oh my gosh. This, you guys, this is why I continue to do these videos. Every time I open a new painting, and I realize some of y'all are getting mad at me because I post so many videos like this and you're spending more money than you would like to. I'm not telling you to go buy these. I do want you to share with me my, I guess my purchases and, and to be able to share with you the quality that I am finding on some of these paintings are just so worth sharing. Even if I've done videos on Anna Banana four or five times now, I'm still always so impressed when I get their pieces or whoever I'm doing a video on. Once I love their stuff, I'm gonna keep shopping from them. And I want you to know it's safe to shop from them too because it took, it took me a year and a half, almost two years, to get to a point where I could find reputable companies with fabulous quality you know, paints and stuff. So hopefully I'm gonna save you a year and a half to two years on having to figure that out for yourself, y'all. <laughs> Does anybody like have a feeling just by looking at this palette that you're standing in front of a basket of Easter eggs? Like what? I'm almost scared but excited to swatch this palette. I mean, because it could be tricky with the pinks, you know, and the greens and all, but I mean, this is in a banana, so I have high hopes. So let's see how we feel about this once we're done. Now remember, you have to number your pots first before you take them out of here. Because if you don't, then it will just be a mystery. <laughs> you will have no freaking idea what colors what when you take the pots out. So I always number them first with a large Sharpie. If you wanna put a label on it, you can do that. For those of you who have you know, printed numbers or whatever. I have a label maker that can do it. I haven't done it yet, but anyway, um, this can just be temporary to put it on there with a Sharpie because it will rub off, you know, as you're painting sometimes. So you might have to reapply the Sharpie, but I definitely want to number them before I take them out of this foam pot holder because otherwise I will be lost as to what color is supposed to be where. Oh my God, Becky, look at her swatching. That is, these are incredible. All right, so which ones are gonna be a problem? 19, one and two, that's it. Oh, maybe 14, but I didn't really put a very, I don't know, thick coat on that. Maybe that's part of it, but you guys, I mean, look at that palette. Now, I do believe number 19 could stand to be a little less yellow, so if I put some white in that, that's gonna fix my opacity issue, but it's also gonna tone it down to match what I consider to be the, the tone of all of these, or the, I don't know, intensity of it, maybe a better word, but oh my gosh, you guys, look. <sighs> And now you know why I'm obsessed with Anna Banana paintings. So that is it for today. I'm hoping I've answered some questions for you through this video and it's not just a painting company review kind of thing. I'm not really reviewing them. I am just sharing my new paintings with you. But you guys, mm -mm -mm. especially for those of you starting out, this company is one that you can trust I believe for consistency, if you need a custom painting and whatnot. So that's just my opinion. And of course, that's all these videos are, is just my opinion. But I hope you like these, these paintings as much as I do because I'm just totally obsessed. But I do want to ask you this. 
which one of these paintings would you paint first? And secondly, which one has the most appealing palette to you? So comment below, let me know what you think, and I will see you back very soon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and go join me on Patreon. All right, thanks so much for watching.